Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to remake uh, an old model of a Broger and Tomat MP9, which is a, a submachine gun, okay, used by US military, I think. Uh, but before we begin, remember to like and subscribe if you're new, if you uh, want to see uh, what I make, a video I make for this channel. You can like and subscribe. If you returning viewer, welcome back. You can like the video uh, if you think this is helpful for you. And if you're interested to become a member, please check out the perks on the screen. Okay, you can read it yourself. Uh, if you become a member, this is the perks we will get. And yeah, let's continue with the review. Okay, so this is the Burger and Tomat MP9. A little bit information i will read it from wikipedia if you want to uh, read it yourself the information will be in the description i always I, I think i start doing that now okay so let's begin so it was uh, designed in 1992 so it's very long time ago uh, like what uh, 30 oh, yeah yeah 30 years ago it was designed 30 years ago and it was manufactured by Burger and Tomat. Designed by Booker and Tomat, it's probably uh, their uh, design uh, division, something like that. It was produced in from 2001 until today. It was in service from 2004 until today. So it's like uh, uh, it took some years from design to uh, active service. Okay, to uh, design to uh, production even that took some time so a few years and then entering service in 2004 so it's that like what one decade maybe uh, you can count it yourself okay so it's fire uh, 9 by 19 millimeter parabellum standard okay but it also can fire swedish uh, design ammunition okay i think the ram is similar to Tokarev uh, ammunition, I think. Okay, and then it's fire also 45 ACP. Still under development. It was used in the United States by uh, uh, Indian SWAT thing. Okay. So uh, I think it's so it's not used by the military, I guess. I think it's the other one. Okay. The other one from a uh, BNT, okay. So yeah, that's it. A little bit information. Three minutes. I'm sorry about that. Let's continue. So yeah, this is it. Let me restart it for you. So you can see this is this is the model here. So before we begin, as usual, we always do this. Okay. Right there. Reloading, how it reloads, very simple. I press R on my keyboard and then it reloads itself. Just kidding, okay. So the button was pressed over here. Okay, you press the button. When you press the button, this part here, magazine release, uh, will disengage from the magazine, allowing the magazine to be pulled out if it's empty or if it's still loaded whatever you want i don't know why you change full loaded magazine with another magazine you're not in video game if you use this so let's continue so basically you uh, press this magazine release button the magazine was released okay just like that press one in and it's done So that's basically the reloading. So the reloading is not MB, ambidextrous, which means uh, it's for left, uh, not left, for right-handed shooter only. This design, okay. So yeah, it have a select selector, okay. So let's begin. 
uh, single file first. So when you pull the trigger, I'm gonna show you what happened without without too much manipulation yet. But I have to remove this uh, trigger housing so you can see clearly. Okay. So I'm gonna show you this. So you see this Glock uh, kind of trigger safety here, similar to Glock. Okay, that's what I remember. Similar to Glock. I don't know. Maybe other pistol have it, but I don't care. If you want to comment in the set, comment section, uh, you can do that. Okay. So let's see the fire mechanism here. So you have to press the trigger safety. So it's, uh, so the trigger can move back because this fire selector here, like you see here, like if you can use your logic here, like if the trigger safety did not go up here, then it will stuck on the fire selector uh, part here. Okay, so you have to pull the trigger safety all the way in. So it's go up and then you can pull the trigger. So the trigger itself was connected to the sear bar here. So when you pull the trigger, the sear bar move, pushing this connector lever here. The connector lever here, okay, as you can see, trigger, trigger bar, connected to the connector lever which is a connector lever connected to the disconnector. Sorry, if you're confused, you, you can slow down the video to follow. Okay, it's fine. Okay, so when you pull the trigger, trigger bar uh, connect with the connector lever. I'm sorry, my choice of what? To the connector lever, slowly pull it back like that. Okay, the connector le lever is connected to this Draw, drop safety it will so it will uh, engage this the, the the drop safety and the roller will engage the sear head allowing the trigger to be to be the trigger to be released and hitting the firing pin okay so i'm removing the connector lever here so you can see more clearly so I'm gonna repeat, pull the trigger, trigger bar with the connector uh, connector lever here, moving the drop safety and the roller, moving it. So it push the sear, allowing the hammer to hitting the fan pin. So you watch carefully like that. You see, so and also the disconnector here was uh, pushing against the hammer from this contact point here. So you do that, hammer release, and then uh, it, it, the hammer release hitting the firing pin. The round is fired. The blowback happened. So this bolt going back, pushing down the hammer. The hammer will push the disconnector into the side, allowing it to be pressed below uh, below the disconnector. And then you see that the disconnector was pushed out right here, and then it go back in. Now the the disconnector is holding the hammer, okay, which uh, allow it to be fire uh, like allow it to be single fire like right here okay so i'm gonna show you from different angle again that's too close sorry about that so maybe from this angle we see you pull the trigger to the connector lever connector lever and the roller here pushing the sear away from the hammer so the sear is being pushed away when you pull the trigger Allowing the hammer to 
drop and hitting the fan pin and also allowing this connector to be move into position ready to disconnect the hammer from the overall action like that yeah sorry about that see so this connector is holding it and then we can see here okay they even have this locking here i guess this is to like for a security reason i guess so in this position if the locking sear is tilted a little bit so if the locking sear is not straight it will prevent the hammer from falling in case some something happened okay like that so now the bolt is pushing this locking sear to be straight and now the another safety feature is off now you have this you uh, the bolt is in battery now okay with uh, run in the chamber now you release the trigger okay when you release the trigger like that i will show you from this angle again sorry uh, right here so when you release the trigger see the trigger bar go forward because it's written to position at the normal position see here As you can see here, the sear was being held by the by this part here, drop safety and the roller here, until you release the trigger. Then it will go back into normal position like that. Okay. So the sear here is pushing against the roller over here. When you release the trigger. It will return into position because it, the the drop safety and the roller now in the, in forward position over here, not over here. So the sear is back in position. When that's back in position, what you see here is the disconnector disengaging the hammer and pass it the pass the engagement into the sear over here. So you see again, you fire now run in the chamber, and then you release the trigger. You see, the disconnector disengage the hammer and pass it into the sear. So now that single fire, very simple. Okay, so one more time. This is the single fire, like that. You see that? Very good. Okay. So that's single fire. As you can see, it's very simple. Now, in, in automatic mechanism, you see there's nothing moving here. Because the system is very similar to Steyr Arc uh, or the uh, like uh, uh, how you call this uh, very similar to F F N F S two thousand uh, like mechanism trigger mechanism very similar to Steyr Arc and then to F S F N F S two thousand this system is quite similar in my memory. It's very similar, uh, quite similar. And then as you can see here, there's nothing happened there because uh, the the difference between single and full auto was how deep you press the trigger. Okay. So as you can see here, 
how do you press the trigger it's like uh, this single right so when you push the trigger like that so that's the distance it go the trigger go and then full auto it go all the way so you see that's full auto right so just the manipulation of the trigger and that uh, the manipulation of the so it's okay why well, it's moving okay so it basically the difference between single fire and uh, full auto fire was in manipulation of the trigger and the trigger uh, the sear bar or the trigger bar here the manipulation of how far it go uh, it being pushed back by your finger like you pull the trigger how far the trigger go and the sear bar go it the, it, it will uh, decide if it's single fire or full auto because as you can see here i'm gonna show you uh, so what actually happened here this is perfect angle watch carefully so this is uh, so this is sing, uh, single fire so it's firing so the roller stop over here right because it was uh, like the trigger was travel halfway over this fire selector now let's see in full auto okay that's a bit slow now in full auto you see the how far the, the trigger go i was right so the locking here here allowing the full auto firing okay so i hope you understand what different between single fire and full auto is how deep you pull the trigger okay so how far you pull the trigger so this is full auto so you see like that so the it's making like a v uh, shape of v okay between the disconnector and sear which is allowing it to uh, not holding back the hammer like not touching the hammer at all you see there's no connect connection there it keep going now because in full auto now what works is this part here the locking sear here so as we can see before in full auto these two part here this connector and sear was being uh, being uh, pushed away by the by the trigger pull allowing it, the hammer to fall like being pushed away you see the hammer keep uh, hitting the firing pin in full auto now what controlling the hammer uh, for it to being released and hitting the firing pin was this part here the locking shell here i'm gonna remove the bolt now as you can see You see the bolt is pushing the locking sear uh, aside to allowing the hammers to hitting the firing pin again. So like that. Okay. 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 Once again, as you can see here. Okay. Like that i'm gonna get back the bolt and i'm gonna show you from this angle so you see the bolt the 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 locking sear is following the bolt shape uh, right here okay you follow like that One more time. So as you can see. Oh, I guess I was wrong. 
So what actually happened here? So the upper part of the locking shear did not hold the hammer, but this part below here, it's holding the hammer here. So as you can see, I'm sorry about that. I was a little bit wrong there. So it's not the upper part, but the lower part here, holding the hammer until you see the locking shear was being pushed aside by the bolt. Okay, into the side like that, allowing the hammer to fall. So that's it. That's full auto firing. In full auto, basically, you pull the trigger all the way back, allowing this this connector and the sear to stay away from the hammer, and then the like the continuous firing operation was uh, being done by the locking sear and the bolt because the locking sear basically holding the uh, the hammer, and then the bolt uh, decided decided when the hammer will be released, which is basically when the bullet was in the chamber and it was in the battery ready for firing okay so i hope you understand that uh, we're already 21 minutes so i'm gonna make it fast so in this model the bolt is hold open we don't need to slow it down that far it from here okay I'm gonna show you the ball uh, the bolt stop a bolt uh, yeah bolt release lever whatever a bolt stop I'll call it bolt stop so it's go up uh, the bolt release lever go up when the round is empty uh, the magazine is empty and the follower pushing it up to hold the ball uh, there's no ball carrier okay this is not a rifle okay so now it's empty the bolt is full open you reload after you reload i think you should just push down this uh bolt release lever down over here allowing the Ball to be released and then around in the chamber, ready for firing. Okay, simple like that. And also, as you can see, the there's a movement on the barrel. Okay, that's too fast. Okay, you see that? I'm gonna slow it down to fifty. Explain it really fast for you. So when you fire the round, as you can see here, okay, when you fire, the blowback happen, and the blowback happen, like it push the barrel and the bolt back, like when you fire the round, the energy is pushing these two, two parts together uh, backward, but as you can see, the barrel here, was being uh, rotated by the locking pin here, which is you see, right there, because there's a cutout here to allow the, to, to force the barrel to rotate, okay? So as you can see, like this, okay, the barrel is rotating, allowing it to be unlocked, like that. So when you fire, these two parts move back together, the, bo the barrel and the ball move back together until the barrel is fully rotated and then uh, the barrel is being pulled by the locking pin here. So the, the energy now is, uh, the energy moving back was on the ball because the barrel is being stopped by the locking pin here. So now it's unlocking okay the bolt continue moving back holding the empty casing the empty yeah empty casing and then the empty casing is being ejected out right about now like right here by this 
बॉल थ्रो लेस लेवर है ओके यू सी दिस पार्ट हियर दिस पार्ट किकिंग आउट द बॉल नॉट द बॉल द एम्प्टी केसिंग आउट सो यू सी now the barrel is being held by the locking pin the bolt keep moving back ejection happen uh, extraction happen and then ejection like that okay new round is put into the chamber okay so as you can see the bolt push forward the barrel and the barrel is twisted uh, being twisted by the locking pin for it to be locked in position now it's ready for firing so that's uh, that's the like the locking mechanism for uh, burger and tomat mp9 okay and then what else okay safety Okay, safety is basically you preventing the trigger from moving back at all. So like that, so like this, safety, the safety. Other than uh, trigger safety, the uh, the fire selector safety, that's two. Okay. So yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, there's also a feature here. Safety lock. So as you can see, the connection was not with the barrel, but the barrel guide here. Okay, so there's barrel guide over here. So the connection happened there. Okay. I guess that's it. There's nothing else to review except for the accessories, which is I'm gonna show you, of course. So, focus and rotate now. As you can see here. Okay, this is uh, all the accessories. Also, this is uh, non rep. Uh, the charging handle just like air 15 charging handle okay okay i guess that's it uh yeah nothing else to review i think if you have something to add you can comment in the comment section below thank you very much for watching and uh, i guess that's it 30 minutes i will definitely put timestamp okay thank you very much thank you for watching and um, bye bye